Final Fantasy series is one of the most popular video game franchises of all time. The role-playing games have sold over 110 million units worldwide, and many features in the game have set new standards in the RPG genre. I myself am a huge fan of the Final Fantasy series. I love the amazing soundtracks, the epic stories, the memorable characters. It's a really well done series overall, and it's no surprise that it's been so successful. However, it took developer Square a few years to bring the success of Final Fantasy outside of Japan. During the late 80s and early 90s, RPGs were sort of a niche genre in North America. Lots of loyal fans, but not quite mainstream. During this time, Square was trying to raise awareness for role-playing games in the West. The end result? Final Fantasy Mystic Quest, the most beginner RPG you will ever play. So what's the story behind this game and the impact it had on the Final Fantasy series? Let's take a look. In the fall of 1991, Ted Woolsey had just received his master's degree in Japanese literature from the University of Washington. Wanting to take a break from school, Woolsey applied at a small company in Redmond looking for translators. The name of the company? Square. His job would be to translate manuals and screen text for Japanese role-playing games. Woolsey loved Japanese culture and had spent several years living in Japan, but had never heard of an RPG before. His job was critical to the company. Square wanted to improve localization efforts of their games in North America. Woolsey's first project was the Game Boy game Saga 3, which was released in North America as Final Fantasy Legend 3. The game was created by Square's new development studio in Osaka, and directed by newcomer Chihiro Fujioka, who also contributed to the musical score. Pleased with his efforts, Square asked Woolsey to do something a little different, review the translation of Final Fantasy 4, which had already been released in North America as Final Fantasy 2. What he found was shocking. The game was initially translated by a Japanese Square employee who spoke some English. When the game was sent to the United States, members of Square's sales and finance department spent extra hours cleaning up the translation. It was a complete mess. It was clear that before his arrival, Square had lacked a structured localization process. Woolsey was then flown out to Square's Japanese offices to discuss future games for localization. A board meeting was held that included Final Fantasy series director Hironobu Sakaguchi and Square president Masafumi Miyamoto. The discussion? How to improve sales and awareness of RPGs in the West. Final Fantasy IV was a critical success. The famous Japanese publication Famitsu gave it a 36 out of 40, one of the highest scores in 1991. Nintendo Power claimed it set a new standard of excellence. The critical response reflected the sales in Japan. Over 1.3 million units of the game were sold. But in North America, not so much. The game sold about 250,000 units. It was way under expectations for Square and Nintendo. They saw the huge success of RPGs in Japan and were hoping American audiences would catch on. But it simply wasn't happening. Square's upcoming game, Final Fantasy V, contained a deep job system that might overwhelm American gamers they decided that American audiences needed to be trained up on Japanese role-playing games. In the meeting, Masafumi Miyamoto exclaimed, We will make a game for America. Development was given to Square Studio in Osaka, the same team that had just finished Final Fantasy Legend 3. The director of that game, Chihiro Fujioka, was named the writer, and Ted Woolsey would translate. The game would be known as Final Fantasy Mystic Quest, and it was released on October 5, 1992 in North America. The game came with a mail-in coupon that offered a free strategy guide. A year later, it was released in Japan as Final Fantasy USA. Let's go ahead and take a look at this game. The first thing you'll notice right off the bat is that this game doesn't look like any other Final Fantasy game you've played. Remember, this game was developed by the Square Osaka team, which had just finished up Saga 3. So this game shares a lot of similarities, mainly the visual style, and that battles take place behind your characters rather than from the side. Mystic Quest has you playing as Benjamin, although you can change his name, who is labeled as the hero of an ancient prophecy. Your goal is to find the four crystals of earth, water, fire, and wind, and restore peace throughout the kingdom. And that's really it. There aren't any plot twists or huge reveals, the entire plot is revealed within the first few seconds of the game. 
Along the way, you'll meet different characters who will join your party temporarily to help you during certain sections of the game. They are also more powerful than you and usually give you a helpful item to use. You can either control the character manually or have the computer do it for you. So since they're only with you temporarily, all the experience and magic and items you get go to you. You don't have to worry about other party members in this game. On that note, let's talk about equipment. Yes, it does exist in this game, but it's not really customizable. If it's better than your previous equipment, the game will use it. The only customizable part is your weapon. During battle, you can change your weapon, which is actually nice since some enemies are weaker to certain weapons. It adds a little strategy to the gameplay. These weapons are also used in the dungeons. You can chop down trees, climb walls, blow open doors. Square added some nice adventure elements to the game, and it actually works. Exploring a dungeon in Mystic Quest is a lot of fun, and I'm sure it allowed the developers to get more creative with their design. However, while they made exploring dungeons fun, they completely killed exploring the overworld. There is none. Every place you go is locked in, kind of like Super Mario World. This was a bummer, as exploring the worlds in Final Fantasy and finding secrets is always fun. Mystic Quest does, however, eliminate random battles. Some Final Fantasy games completely bog you down in dungeons and overworlds with random battles, not in Mystic Quest. It allows you to avoid unnecessary fights, and it was nice to not get into a battle every two steps. Unfortunately, the battles aren't super fun. The enemies aren't challenging, and you'll find yourself pressing the A button over and over again to finish each battle. There isn't much strategy involved, minus the weaknesses certain enemies have. The most difficult tasks you might have are status effects, which are made extremely more difficult because you only have two people in your party. If you both get paralyzed, the battle's pretty much over. But again, this is a beginner's RPG. If you die, you can start the same battle over again as if nothing happened. And that's the most important thing to remember about Mystic Quest. It's an introduction to role-playing games. By that measure, I think it does a good job. The game never feels difficult, but I think a newbie to the genre would want that. It's also a short game and can be completed in about 10 hours. Ted Woolsey commented that Mystic Quest was the easiest game he has ever translated due to the lack of story and dialogue. He stated, It was basically a Game Boy game that was put out on the Super Nintendo. So if you're an RPG veteran, yeah, this game's not for you. Heck, it even says on the box, entry-level role-playing adventure. I've played RPGs for a long time, so playing through Mystic Quest was a pretty mundane experience for me. But I did enjoy some of the features in this game. I thought the adventure elements added to the dungeons were nice, and I like not having random battles. Well, those are my thoughts. How did the rest of the world react to this game? Overall, Final Fantasy Mystic Quest failed to spark more interest in the RPG genre. It had modest sales and received average reviews. It was clear that making an easy, beginner's RPG was not the direction Square needed to go. Many gamers who experienced previous Final Fantasies were upset and felt like Square had insulted their intelligence. They clamored for a true Final Fantasy release. Mystic Quest may not have been the answer, but it was important in the big picture. It convinced Square to take more chances and not compromise. After Mystic Quest, they localized Secret of Mana, Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy VI, and Super Mario RPG. The games were praised and sold relatively well, eventually making way for the smash hit Final Fantasy VII, which cemented the Japanese role-playing game genre as a mainstay in the West. After Mystic Quest, writer Chihiro Fujioka was named director of Super Mario RPG, Legend of the Seven Stars. He would later work for developer Alpha Dream on the Mario and Luigi games, including Partners in Time and Bowser's Inside Story. Ted Woolsey is remembered as the man who legitimized game translations. He would go on to translate more Square titles, including Secret of Mana, Final Fantasy VI, Chrono Trigger, and Super Mario RPG. In 1996, Square moved their offices to Los Angeles. Woolsey decided not to join them. He currently works for Microsoft as the director of first-party publishing for Xbox Live Arcade. If you want to check out Final Fantasy Mystic Quest for yourself, the cartridge is actually pretty cheap and easy to find. You can also purchase the game on the Wii's Virtual Console. But just remember, it's not your ordinary Final Fantasy. That's all for this episode of Gaming Historian. Thanks for watching.